Hello, y'all on YouTube. This is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today, we have a very cool review impressions of a knife I actually got at Blade Show. I bought this knife at Blade Show. This is really, really cool. This is the Brian Brown X1. All right. Um, I don't know if I did an unboxing or anything for this. So this is sort of an unboxing. I'm talking a little bit about my first impressions, but it's also a full review because I've had this for a while. Um, they uh, went over to the Civivi Wii booth and they were sold out. This thing sold out right away and I knew it probably would. And I figured, man, there's no way I'm going to get one of these. And then I found out Brian Brown actually had a bunch of extra of these. He was in the second room. So I went over there, talked to Brian. I've talked to him a couple times. Really nice guy if you haven't ever spoken to him. And he had one and I bought one absolutely. And I said, this is going to be a channel members giveaway. And I wanted to check it out. And man, I am glad I did. So if you like the Jaeger, and let me pull out my Jaeger so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I'm a big fan of Brian Brown. I like his stuff. And I also have another Wii knife, uh, the Trogon. This is another Brian Brown design, by the way, if you didn't know. But here is his Jaeger. All right, so the Jaeger, this is a really nice knife. Uh, definitely got some wonderful action, beautiful uh, fuller and everything, multiple deployments. I like this one. This is a great one. But this seems very similar. This seems like a budget version of the Jaeger. And the Jaeger is a nice knife. Don't get me wrong. This is a Riot made knife, beautiful hollow grind high-end frag this was the smoky mountain knife works exclusive with the frag pattern beautiful 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 knife really do enjoy this one so yeah that was a cool one this is the x1 and i believe it's kind of like a budget version of the jaeger if you always wanted to you like the jaeger wanted to get one you thought man i just cannot afford that this would be something to look at all right so let's talk about this so the knife name is the x1 ex1 o, a capital o one e x1 right and the the uh, knife manufacturer is civivi uh, they made this knife um, and the designer is brian brown brian brown is the designer of this knife and i actually bought it from brian brown himself at his booth at blade show so what are the materials this is pretty cool so we're looking at a knife and let's go ahead and get zoomed in you can see this uh, you'll see this Nitro V blade steel, which I think is super awesome. Nice budget steel. Um, G10 handles, right? G10 steel liners on the inside. A G10 insert. I believe that's a G10 insert, is it? Or yeah, I think it looks like it's a G10. Is it steel? I don't know. I, I thought it's G10. Maybe it's steel. No, it's G10. Yeah, it's G10 insert. A G10 insert backspacer. Um, uh, steel deep pocket carry clip, a very deep pocket carry, maybe a little too deep for me, but I think the Civivi clip, you could replace it. It's a steel clip, so you could get the titanium clip, which I think would look nice on this, right? This is one of those knives I might carry very much, but it, you know, I bought it with the intention of doing a giveaway. It's a hollow grind, Nitro V hollow grind. It's got a fuller, which allows multiple deployment. This jimping up here is pretty aggressive, but it's rounded really nicely. So when you go over, it's not going to catch you, but if you push down, it's locking you. You're locked in place. You're not moving anywhere, right? And uh, this this uh, this fuller up here has got some nice sharp edges, so it's going to work well for deployment and stuff. Now, I have large hands with big meaty fingers, and I'm coming over to the edge. It does come down here. So if you have extra large hands with meaty fingers or double extra large hands, I think you're going to be down here on the edge. But this edge is meant to kind of hold, to get your hand on there. So look, there's, there's room. And if I were to go out here, I could definitely hold it with all this extra room up here, right? Now, there is a finger, a little choil here you sort of could get a finger in there if you got smaller fingers i'd be very careful i think it works better for a pinch grip so you can do a precision cut with that knife which i i, I like that idea right um, nice and rounded round it all the way around here round it all the way around the g10 it's not just chamfered it's rounded so it feels comfortable it is flat g10 with texture good grip so you're not going to slip out of your hand which i like a lot as well um Let's look at the inside, the liners, a lot of cutout on those steel uh, liners, so that's some good weight relief there. It is a liner lock. You can see good access to the liner lock, a little cutaway, so it's not really difficult to get to. It has some jimping on there, which gives you some, some uh, grip, so your hand's not slipping, sliding all over as you're trying to grip and push it this in, right? It is, it's a pretty tight liner lock. If, I, if this was my knife, I would probably tune this because it's not quite uh, drop shut, right? I don't like guillotine, but I don't like multiple shakes. So for some people, that may be perfect, right? You may like that. So if that's your cup of tea, this knife is perfect. It's definitely got a crisp, 
crisp uh, flipper detent for sure, right? You've got a little uh, little flatness going on there. The jimping goes all the way to the very edge, which is really nice. I hate it when the jimping start, stops like right there and that very edge is really round. Your finger slides right off. So I can get on there and get some good grip. Now, the light switch works really well on this one and I believe the push button, yeah, the push button works really well on this one. That's nice. Then you have the fuller and the fuller works really, really nicely. And the, the thing is because it's a big flat grind, I can still bonus flick you know, all the way down to the very end, getting into this little part, I still have bonus flick. Uh, I mean, it's uh, not really needed because of the fuller, but it's nice to know if you if you got really long fingers, and your fingers are way down here, you can absolutely bonus flick that. So you you, you know, call it what you will. I always like to see a bonus flick. I always like to see a little extra you can do with it, because it is a liner lock. This works really well left-handed as well, and flips really well left-handed as well. Now. You'll notice this clip is on the outside. It's not recessed, but the screws are recessed, right? Or the, it's not the, the clip is not inset, but the screws are recessed in the clip. And so you can swap them. And there's, it's not sticking out because it's not uh, inset, right? So it just fits on the outside. There's, it's a little tight. I mean, if you've got really thick pants, you might be a little tight in there. You might consider a different clip. I've put that on my, uh, like I bought a secondary clip for my Wii. Let me find it. Where are you? My Wii, my, my Wii banter which is way down in there. All right, so here's the Wii Banter, and this is the Civivi clip. You can buy that, and that typically will fit on there. So if you wanted to get a titanium mill clip, and it's a little nicer, a little more room, easier in and out of the pocket, definitely something worth considering, right, for something like that, you could do that. Um, just, just, you know, some ideas. Um, I don't know what skiffs fit in there. I'm sure skiffs fit in there. I didn't, because uh, I'm giving this knife away, I didn't really check to see what skiffs fit in this one but you know it's something you could probably put in there if you wanted to uh, certainly of consideration if that's something you like right um, there you go uh, I do I do very much enjoy this knife now let me talk a little bit about the edge nitro V fuller beautiful jimping this is a hollow grind I don't know if you can see that a beautiful hollow grind can we get that can you get that angle can you see that I want to make sure you can see that I don't know if we can see that. Goodness, I'm trying to get the light to see it, but it's a nice hollow grind. Let's see, can we get the, the at least the reflection, the shadows? So beautiful hollow grind, nice thin, super slicey. Definitely uh, shave the hairs right off your arm. Came really nice and sharp. Nitro V does drop up really well, so that's nice. Uh, the action is nice. Uh, I think this would break in more. You put a little bit of oil in there. I think I put a little bit of oil during. Uh, I don't know if I did it on. Boxing? Did I do an unboxing? I don't know. You know what? I don't know. So I don't think I did put oil in there. So let's let's just try it, right? Let's put a little bit of a little dab on the on the cage bearings. Don't want a whole lot, just a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna put a little oil in there. And now I'm gonna put a little bit on the detent ball, because a lot of times that's where, you know, the drop shutty goodness occurs. So typically yeah, there's no ramp on this. Like most of his knives, all of Brian Brown's knives usually have a ramp on there. And that's really makes it really smooth. But that's the higher end knives. You pay for that, right? That's extra milling. That's extra detail work that makes a knife cost more. All right, so we just put a little drop of, that's Nano Weight 85. I always put the 85 on the detent ball, heavier, thicker viscosity uh, oil on there. Um, let's break that in a little bit, work that in. As you, you know, as you deploy and carry this knife, it's going to have some nice action to it. So I think that'll that'll be a lot of fun. Um, let's see, does that change it much at all? Not really, not really. I, I didn't know if that would. Yeah, it's starting to drop a little bit more. There we go. Well, I'm shaking the whole table. Let's get there. It'll get there. But you can tune it if you if you if you don't want if you want more drop shutty. That's like I said. That's something I'd probably do. The action's really great, really, really, really great. So I like the materials. I like how it opens and closes. You've got three, four um, ways to, to to deploy it. Works really great left and right handed. It closes nicely. That getting past that. Oh, and let's see where the detent is. So you clear the detent right there. So. By the time it hits my finger here, I've cleared the detent, so I don't have to worry about that. So it's very, I can close my eyes and fidget this knife and not worry about hitting a double clutch. Like, so if I stop it up here, here's the clutch, and you might get that double clutch, but that's really high, right? You clear the detent, you're already clear right there. And so 
that's that's cool. I I, I, I hate a really late clutch or detent, you know, because that then you have to be careful with it. Um, some knives are designed that way, and they have the lock bar and the angle and all that stuff, and it works. You just got to know that that's how they designed it, right? Like a lot of custom makers will do that. All right. So that's the blade. That's the steel. Let's do some measurements on this guy. All right. So it's steel liners, G10, uh, kind of a big blade. So let's see, three. Oh, I was gonna say three six. Uh, three point four pounds. Three point four ounces, not pounds. That would be a heavy blade. Um, three point four ounces, which is not bad. It is a smaller knife, so you know. I mean, you know, take it for for that. Let's deploy it and let's look at look at the overall length. You can see that this is not a super huge knife. It is seven inches, maybe seven and an eighth of an inch if you look at the tip there in the back. The grip area that you're looking at is going to be about three and a half inches. And then if you do choose to use the little the little finger choil, you and you got a small enough finger, it's about four and a quarter, right? Overall cutting length from the tip to the back of the handle is going to from the tip, sorry to the back of the handle is about two and I want to say 15 sixteenths, two and 15 sixteenths. Uh, actual overall cutting length of the blade is going to be about two and three quarters of an inch, right? So it's not, it's not a huge blade, nice thin hollow grind. It's going to be a beautiful slicer. Let's look at the blade stock thickness. Now this not, doesn't look super thick, but let's take a look and see how thick are we here. So we're 122, uh, 122, 123 thousandths of an inch. So it's not super thick. It's not super thin. It's, uh, you know, relatively, it's a good size thickness, but the hollow grind does come out to be very thin, so it's super slicey. You know, with that hollow grind, I wouldn't try to wedge anything because you're going to bend or chip that, right? As you would with over here. This is a super, super hollow grind over here as well. As you can see that probably a little bit better on that one. But this is also a hollow grind. And you can see that similarity in the profile there, right? That, oh, and you can see the hollow grind right there. You see that? Yeah, that shows up nicely. So, um, yeah, um, that is the overall blade stock thickness. Now, so where do, what does this knife fall into? Is it a budget? It's a regular, high end? It's absolutely a budget. It's well under $100. I believe this knife was like $65, $59, dollars somewhere around there. Um, I'll have the price here if I, if I remember. If not, it'll be in the description down below. But it's definitely in the 60s, if not the high 50s, right? It's, it's good. And if you find it like at White Mountain Knives or if you find it at Blade Binge Shop, uh, use RNK10, get 10% off. And uh, Blade Binge supports the channel. Our um, White Mountain Knives, well, it just saves you money. And I you know, always want you to save money because you can buy more knives, right? So, um, but those are places where you can find it maybe a little bit cheaper. So if you can get it there. Uh, definitely, definitely a cool. Ooh, that oil's starting to break in. I just noticed that. Look at that. Yeah, it's starting to starting to close really nicely. Yeah, now it's starting to starting to get very nice and smooth. I like that. It's starting to break in with a little bit of oil. It's going to be cool. Right. Um, so it's definitely a budget knife. Uh, what's the purpose? EDC, hard use, collection piece. Any budget knife for me is never a collection piece, but you can collect what you want. If you like Brian Brown and every one of his designs, collect away, right? For me, budget knife is meant to be bought and it can be replaced and be used. It's a tool, right? Oh, that action's really starting to... I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. Okay, so it's breaking in really nice. Yeah, so I may not need to adjust this. That's really cool. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, all right. Very, very nice, very nice. All right, uh, sorry, got a little distracted. I've, I've just, it's another little enjoyable find, right? Um, Absolutely EDC. This is a perfect EDC. Really, really great for EDC in use. Uh, I think it'd be hard use as you could with a liner lock. Mind you, it's a liner lock, right? It's not a fixed blade. It's not an axe. So don't be doing fixed blade axe things. So if you got a log of wood and you're trying to break it up, if you're in a tight situation, it's life or death, use what you got. But if you are out there, you have the right tool. Use a fixed blade. Use a fixed blade or an axe. Have the right tool for the place. So I just want to recommend that but i think you can definitely hard use all day long on this but it is a very hollow grind very thin so it's great for slicing i wouldn't be doing crazy weird turn cuts and stuff on this thing right so just keep that in mind because that this hollow grind is going to be beautiful it's going to be a slicer it's going to spread things really nicely but it is a hollow grind so it's not going to be as thick as some thicker blades that you might be doing hard use with right so keep that in mind um 
Argos and Field. I like this. I like this a lot. It does come with a nice taper off there, so if you're cutting into something, you're never going to feel like you're going to lose your grip. you got a nice finger guard with the flipper. It's definitely comfortable. Um, I like this falling out in the back here. That's kind of nice. Everything's rounded, nothing sharp. There's no corners, no hot spots, edges anywhere that's going to burn your hand, you know, or, or cut, you know, wear or, or scrape you, whatever. Um, very aggressive jimping, which is nice if you're really doing a precision cut. So, and you know, definitely great little pinch kind of tool as well for those precision cuts if you're cutting something on the table or box or something i like that i like that a lot i think that's really cool um i add the texture on the g10 is great does give you a good grip it's rounded no no un un discomfort there uh it does work really well it's captive pivot so if you do disassemble t8 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 uh the clip might be a t6 yeah the clip is a t6 but t8s all around that's really that's really nice it's really nice. T T6 is on the on the screw though. That's the only bummer, but you know, hey, if you got if you got to have T6s, it's might as well be a clip which can be replaced. And usually when you get one of those Civivi clips, they'll have uh, T8s. So there you go. Um, yeah, so that's really cool. The the multiple deployment is great. The open and closing is great. I like that. It's very comfortable in hand. It's very easy to use one-handed. Very easy to use left and right-handed. I really do appreciate that. So, and the close is really nice. It closes really well for a liner lock. Very, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so, that's the overall feeling of the opening close. All right. So let's talk about fidgety goodness. So you've got a flipper, and the flipper can be a, um, the the um, um, the light switch, or you can do the push button. Both of those work, right? So that's cool, left and right handed. You've got the fuller. You can flip it up high like that. You can flip the finger down low like that. That's nice. You've got bonus flick with this flat grind. I can even open and close it like that, which is really nice. And I didn't have to tune this. Put a little oil in there, and that thing just breaks in really, really, really nicely and keeps it nice and crisp. So all you guys who like the really strong detent, you know, put a little oil in there, and this thing is going to be, it's, it's good to go. Um, I really like the access here. This is not tiring at all because it's cut. It's enough cut away. It's enough access. I can put my thumb and then just close it like that. So that makes it really fidgety and very comfortable. So yeah. So the so the fidget factor between that, the flipper, the bonus. I'm gonna give this a uh, give it a six. I'll give this one a six. I, li I like the I like the fuller a lot. That works really well. It go works all the way out to the very edge. I like the flipper. It's got good adequate jimping. All that stuff works really well. I had no, you know, finger slipping off. Even as I do that to pretend to slip off, it's gripping. I can feel it. I can feel it catching the the jimping there, which means that I'm having to intentionally really be careful. Because if I don't, I'm still going to flip it, right? If I'm pretending I'm to, I'm like I'm pretending to slip, it's still gripping. So. I gotta give it a good solid six, right? A good solid six. There's, I can't, I can't do less than that. I can't give it a five. So that's why it gets a little extra bonus. So I like that the fidget factor uh, that you have. The fidget factor scale is great. Now the fidgety goodness out of all of that, I have to tell you, Civivi is knocking it out, man. And Brian Brown really did an outstanding design. So this is gonna get a hundred, a hundred. Everything on this is done so well so so well i like the access to the lock bar i like everything about this it just works really really well so this is a full on 100 fidgety goodness is this a recommended knife 100 percent yes 100 percent yes absolutely recommended knife i think if you're looking for a budget knife if the aesthetic of this knife appeals to you if you like a nice big Warren Cliff, sort of a, play, a blade like this, reverse tanto, whatever you want to call this, right? I mean, modified, whatever. Uh, if you like the handle, the grip, the size, this is absolutely a joy to carry. If you like a liner lock, yeah, absolutely 100% recommended. This would be a great gift knife. This would be a great work knife in the in the, in the car, in a backpack, and you know, in your toolbox, you know, just carry around when you're working around the yard and stuff like that. This is a great knife. I, I really highly, highly recommend this knife, and I think it's it's a really, really cool knife tool to have so yeah definitely recommend it love to hear your questions your comments about this your thoughts on this feel free to comment down below i'll try to reply to them all um 
Yeah, so thank you. Hey, if you found this content fun, interesting, worthwhile, or entertaining, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button? Subscribing and liking the videos really helps out the channel. Allows the channel produce more content, do more things, ultimately do more things for you guys. So thank you. Thank you to all you guys who watch the videos, who like the videos, who enjoy the content. I really do appreciate you guys. And if you haven't already, hit that notification button down below so you can be notified of future content like this video. And to all my channel members, a big, honest, healthy thank you. Appreciate you guys. If it weren't for you guys, some of the things that we do, I wouldn't be able to do till way down the road. And I am very grateful for that. I, you allow me to do things sooner and, and other things that I'm just excited to be able to do on this channel. Check out things, you know, look at certain knives. Thank you. Thank you to you channel members. You allow this channel to grow more quickly. So I do really genuinely appreciate you guys. And because people have been so generous with their memberships and we have so many, I try to do a really nice once a month channel member giveaway. Um, usually, you know, uh, you know, it, it typically was going to be just a budget knife giveaway, but because of that, I always try to put a little bit of that money that's so generously given through the memberships back in for the giveaway. So just so you know, usually it's a, it's definitely not a budget knife. It's definitely over a hundred dollar knife that I try to give away as once a month for my small way to say thank you to you. So if that's entertaining, if that's enticing, excuse me, uh, and you thought, hmm, I'd like to become a channel member, I would love to have you. I'd be honored. Please don't ever feel obligated. But if you are interested, check out the link down below. There's a description. In, uh, check out the description down below. There's a link. I said that backwards. Um, there's three different tiers of membership. would be honored in any one of those uh, memberships. Um, and uh, as a small way also to say thank you, if you do become a member, immediately everyone who's a brand new member, I would love to send you a channel sticker. Uh, email me with your name and address if you're a brand new channel member and you've never gotten a sticker before. Or if you're a member now and, uh, um, and or you've been a member for a while and you've never asked for uh, um, a sticker, email me. I'd love to send you a channel sticker as well. All right. So if you haven't also, check me out over on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.